Good flight. Yes. Pleasant enough. <laughs> I was just passing. I thought I'd call in. Anne was in bed, but she insisted on getting up. Said she'd be down in a minute. That's what I'm dropping off. It's an awful daub, really. But uh, Anne expressed to like him. It's keeping her. Denai Morari, at a girl entertainment. Sweet, and the Opsky. Okay, so you play bad incredibly well. Thank you. Um, I love the way that you do it. I'm, I'm a fan, as I said, um, of several of your past films. I loved you in, like, The Young Victoria and in... Uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes. Thank you, Holmes. thank you. Holmes. Sherlock yes. Holmes, my yes. goodness. Do you prefer playing bad? Uh, I don't dislike it. I have to say, I mean, the thing is, I've been doing this for 20 years. It's only the last five years I've been bad. The irony was before really? I started playing the villains, I was playing lovers, fathers, brothers. You know, I wasn't the bad guy. And yeah. in fact, there was a thing I did on British television about five or six, maybe a little bit longer, six or seven years ago, uh, playing a uh, gangster mm -hmm. uh, based on a, on a real life gangster from the 1960s. And I had to canvas hard for the part because everybody went, he's too nice, he can't do it, he can't plumb the depths, he can't be dark enough. Eventually we did it, we won awards, it was absolutely fine. And ever since, these villains have come across my, my, my you know, vision. It's like, no, we were wrong before. No, now he's bad. Yeah, but it, the, the nature of the industry is such that you see somebody doing something, and if it's successful, you think, get that bad guy. Agreed. And I made a decision that I wouldn't turn them down for fear of being typecast, because they're such great parts, and they were great directors to work with. You know, I did Stardust, I did uh, Kick-Ass with Matthew Vaughan, I did Robin Hood with Ridley Scott, and it, it yielded some great films with some wonderful directors. Um, but what seems to be happening now is that slowly we're, we're moving away. Certainly Jim Priddo is a very sympathetic character. All I want from you is one code name. Alaline. Tinker. Aiden. Taylor. Land. Soldier. Oh, we drop sailor, it's too close to Taylor. And rich man doesn't seem to be applicable. Esther Haas. Poor man. And the fifth? Smiley. Can you talk to me about that line and what it what it refers to? I know Colin Firth says it in the film. Can you talk to me about that? Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy is a, a nursery rhyme. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, thief is how it continues. And in the film, Control, played by John Hurd, uses them as code names for a group of people who are suspected of being undercover double agents. And um, the film really is an attempt to discover who the double agent is within the secret services uh, and is selling information to the Russians. Now, strangely enough, I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theorist. I think the internet has made us all sort of uh, crazy in that way. Um, I was studying a lot and finding a lot of films on MI5 earlier this year and this summer, and I'm just wondering if this part and maybe the research for the role and, and engrossing yourself in this world has maybe made you inquisitive in that way as well. Um, it's a world I'd love to not get involved with. I mean, it's so murky and difficult and strange that if you really open the lid on um, conspiracy theories and what's really going on behind the scenes, it must be terrifying. It's like a rabbit hole, it really is. I mean, I've said it a couple of times today, but the truth is, Julian Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks, said the other day in an interview that if you own an iPhone or a Blackberry, your information and your whereabouts are available to security services throughout the world. It's as simple as that, and that is a fact. If you really start to think about that, they've got tabs on virtually everybody. So the amount of uh, observation that's going on exceeds probably even our wildest dreams. I would agree with that. This book, or excuse me, this film is based on an incredibly successful book. Considering mm -hmm. that, does it make you nervous at all about the fans and, you know, maybe how they'll judge the film or...? 
It's always the way when you make a film out of a novel that uh, people will have their own ideas of how the characters are, what they look like, and um, it's a fact you just have to deal with every time you do this. But I think this is a very faithful rendition of the novel, and the fact that John le Carre, who wrote it, was around when we filmed it and was um, godfather to the whole project and gave us his blessing means that uh, we knew that what we were doing uh, was the right thing. Yes, doesn't he even make an appearance in the film? He does, yeah, he appears briefly in the um, Christmas party scene. In that lovely. Yeah. All right, well thank you so much, our time is up. No, no, my pleasure, Fine. my pleasure. It's so quick, isn't it? Thank you, I know.